Welcome to episode 2 of the Northern Soul Outdoors um, vlogs. This episode, we're back in Yorkshire, uh, North Yorkshire actually, um, in the little village of Malham, which is situated within limestone country. Um, Malham is actually mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and I think it means settlement in the gravelly places. Um, can't see much gravel around, but it's a popular destination actually for walkers and uh, we're here on a Saturday and if I turn around you can see how busy it actually is. Would have expected Sunday to be slightly busier than this um, but it isn't. So we're here on a Saturday and we're going to do a, a circuit starting off in Malham and finishing in Malham and we're going to cover places like Janet's Foss, Gordale Scar, the limestone pavement above uh, Gordale Scar, over to Malham Tarn, back down to Malham Cove, and we come back down this road here, back into the village itself. So, this is an indication of the route we're going to be taking. It's about six miles, don't know how many feet of ascent, but I'll put that on screen. of Malham, not within the town itself, is Malham Smithy, as you can see here. I'm um, just stood outside, and it's actually a working smithy, and they make all sorts of handcrafted wrought iron articles for sale, and sell them there in the smithy itself. So, should we go in and have a look? Come on. Just making our way from Malham Smithy, um, taking the path. We're actually on the Pennine Way, and we're going to be taking the path that leads towards Janet's Foss, probably 15 minutes away. I did ask at the smithy whether I could film inside because they had the forge going and there was some hammering and things. It would have made a nice bit of footage, but she was reluctant to be filmed, and um, she did say I'd have to make an appointment and come back. But that's not really the point of a vlog, is it? So, there we go. Missed out on a nice bit of internal shots, but onwards and upwards. See you in a bit.
We're just approaching Janet's Foss now, which is further up on Gowardale Beck. And it's where the Gowardale Beck streams over an outcrop of tufa, which is a type of limestone. And the waterfall itself was an area where they used to use it for sheep dip in years, years gone past. And it's actually a Scandinavian term, um, Foss is a Scandinavian term for waterfall. Uh, it translates into English as force and you can still sometimes see it as in the previous video we're at Scalibur Force or sometimes Foss and it's just up there at the back. It's quite busy, busy day today around here. Didn't expect it to be like this really. Um, and you can see it over the back there. I'm just going to wait for a few people to move so I can get a better picture. So come with me and walk this way. Here we are right in front of Janet's Foss, or Janet's Foss as it's sometimes known. Janet was actually a furry queen who, there was a cave to the rear um, of the waterfall and it's a cave where Janet was supposed to inhabit and it's the uh, force of the furry queen. Um, quite a popular spot if I spin round as you can see and if I turn the right round you can see the azure pool at the back. They used to put sheep in there um, during the summer and dip them to try and get rid of ticks and things like that. And it was a bad, a big community event doing that. All the village used to turn out whilst they dip the sheep. So, right, we'll move on to Gordale Scar. Keep watching. Just left Janet's Foss and we're now walking up alongside Gordale Beck, which is over here. And Gordale Beck cuts, or has actually cut over many thousands of years, a bit of a gorge in the limestone. It's called Gordale Scar, and this is it behind me, as you can see. And the path, it's actually a public footpath, runs up through Gordale Scar and up the waterfall at the end of the scar onto the uh, the Malham pavement, the limestone pavement above. So that's the route that we're going to be taking and it's quite impressive. Um, actually quite impressive when you get up there and get in between them cliff faces. It's a bit of a mecca for climbers as well. I doubt that there'll be any here today, it's a bit too busy with people. But um, yeah, it's an interesting piece of geology. We're still just walking alongside Gordale Beck um, and one of the things about limestone country up here is you get streams like this which appear to be quite substantial <laughs> just appear from nowhere out of the ground and that's because of the that's the, the porosity of the limestone and the amount of water that's contained within. So we're just getting to the, the sort of the top of Gordale Scar here and all this, as you can see all the hillsides, all the cliff faces all uh, close in quite a lot and um, it's quite impressive really because you just walk around the corner and you have this. I think at one time it was a cavern with a roof over the top and over the years the roof collapsed and the water has eroded it all and just um, opened it all up. But that, uh, that cliff face there is usually inhabited by crag rats. You probably can't see, but you can see that the, the, there is chalk marks on the way up. So they usually hang off there with ropes and things. So our path goes up by the waterfall and we climb over that and up onto the tops. So a 
come on, walk this way. We're actually getting higher and higher up now, the scar and the, the path goes straight up the waterfall. Um, it looks probably worse than it actually is, it's quite some good handholds. Um, you've got to go straight up the buffers in the middle. Um, it's two stages of a separate waterfall higher up, which isn't as bad as this. This is perhaps, it looks worse than it actually is. So we're just going to go straight up there. The, I wouldn't say the top of Gordale Scar, but the waterfall part. Hope you can hear me for the sound of the water, as you can see behind. That's the second waterfall of the of the two. We just climbed the first one, which you can see behind me, and it's not too bad. I came up with Steve and his dog, and these two guys have got up with their dog, so. If canines can climb, so can people. Got to the top of Gordale Scar now, uh, which is just over that hill, and we're into a valley with Gordale Beck down in the bottom, as you can probably see on the side there. And we're now just going to make our way up this path where these two guys are coming down. Then we're up on the limestone plateau at the summit, nice and steady, then over to um, Malham Town. Um, I suppose you could say the summit of the wall really. Um, we're on the limestone above Malham as you can see. And a dead sheep. Uh, yeah, so this is where we are. Um, it's windy. Town. That's my bleak 
countryside up here. And um, honestly, I'm stood now on what is a Roman road. That down there is a, an old um, drove road or a, a green lane. It's called Mastiles Lane. It leads down towards Kilnsey. Um, famous feature called Kilnsey Crag down there. And <clears throat> it's an old, uh, quite a wide ancient highway. It's good for mountain biking, I know that. I've been down a few times in the past on the mountain bike. Um, just on the tarmac road for a short time. It takes us to the town. away from this bleak stretch of moorland, um, rather is bleak, I certainly wouldn't like to um, be stripped naked in the middle of winter and dumped up here, it'll be a little bit fresh, um, as you can see behind me, I'm going to take a left turn and head down to Malham Cove, approach the um, outfall from Malham Town, taking the opportunity of uh, having a lie down, as you do. Um, so this is actually the outlet from Malham Tarn, which Malham Tarn is just in that hollow in the hills there. Right at the back is Malham Tarn House, which is now a field study centre um, run by the Field Studies Council, I think it is. But the house was originally a private residence many, many years ago. It's quite old, quite a grand place as well. Um, the claim to fame for the house is that it's where Charles Kingsley, the famous author, was staying when he wrote his novel The Water Babies. Um, so he wrote that there. And there is a nice walk around the tarn. You can actually park up there, walk across around the tarn, back down this road here behind me, back to the car. It's nice in winter, and it's crisp and clear. It takes about an hour and a half, and then down into Malham to the pub for some lunch. So, which is where we're going to make our way to now. I'm just going to continue along here, take a left turn, towards Malham Cove. It's all downhill from here. If you watched the last video, you'd be familiar with Atamaya Cave and Victoria Cave and Lookout Cave and things. And yet another one. Significant little action points for the caves. And you do get potholes as well. Well underground in the caves. And uh, Valley, and as you see, the landscape opens up behind me into quite a big and steep limestone valley, and you can see where the water would have run down, down through. So keep progressing down. I think we end up down in in that valley. this ankle twisting path and make our way lower down and the weather's coming in as well if you can see we've got very fine rain bit of a dry river valley now as you can see behind me running down Malham Cove is just around the corner at the bottom perhaps not half a mile off something like that so we're going to make our way around the head of here mm. that looks like there's some uh, pitch storm paving on the hillside and walk along the valley bottom so come on this way up to the bottom of that pitch stone path down into the dry river you can see where the water would have come tumbling down but um, that pitch stone path I know there's been erosion but that is the worst path I've ever been down it's been raining slightly the rock is greasy, your feet are slipping and sliding everywhere and the way that the rocks have been pitched into the hillside make your feet slip off them. Surprising nobody's ever broken an ankle on there, they probably have but we don't know. 
So anyway, onwards to the bottom of the dry valley now and we're approaching what is probably the best known stretch of limestone pavement in the country which is that and that is the limestone above Malham Cove so we're just going to make our way there have a, a wander around oh we have to walk across it actually to get the path back down into Malham village itself so it's going to be a lot of looking down at the feet here just purely because of the nature of the limestone if you look at it you've got Clinton Grikes which is the local terms for the rocks themselves and the um, eroded channels within them and as you as I said earlier it has been raining so these could be quite slippy so I've got the walking stick out just to try and help steady myself so come on let's go over Malham Cove Here we are, Malham Cove, and that's the edge of the cove here, as you can see behind me. And it's about, I think it's about 350 feet straight down, as, as you'll see shortly, because we're going to go, um, there's a path. There's a path over that side, you can see snaking down the hillside. So, we're going to go down that path, and back into Malham village itself but um, this is it Malham Cove quite fabulous very impressive all limestone and at one time there was a, a waterfall used to sweep over the top and down the bottom and I think it was in 2015 Storm Desmond it flooded the valley at the back so much that the, the waterfall actually came over the top again which is understood to be the first time in many centuries that that has happened. I'll try and find some footage of that and show you. back on Malham Cove and I'm just going to go and have a sit down next to Stephen Sherlock and um, dry off a touch back up here on the moonscape that is um, the limestone pavement above Malham Cove and as you can see I'm walking gingerly because it really is an ankle breaker so we're going to head that way down the path and then we'll see it in all its full glory so come on this way we go it's on the path that comes down the side of Malham Cove now um, it's very well made it must have taken quite some time to build um, it's certainly not ideal situation to put a path with steps um, I've got to say it's hard going though and hmm, looks like part of it's up for repair as well don't know how many thousands of feet come up and down this each year but I would hazard a guess oh, that it's in the hundreds of thousands and uh, I for one certainly wouldn't want to be the man lugging that up the hillside really so we keep plodding down here and then we're on a pretty level path back into Malham itself. So come on, keep going. 